you know, how do you attack Paraparamu under, under stroke play conditions and the pressure of a New Zealand Open? I mean, we've got those first five holes, which you, you, um, you know, you kind of struggle to get through the five and then there's a lot of minefields there and then you've got a little bit of, um, you know, six through eight, you can, you can make up some ground and, and well, probably even a little bit more than that and then you kind of hang on coming home. But you, you started that last round in 93 with a birdie on the second and a birdie on the third. So you, part, you, you started pretty hot. Yeah, it's a, yeah, well, I drove the ball driving. I, I worked out that you have to drive the ball well and with a driver. I don't think you, you can sort of bail out those first five holes, as you, as you said. You know, the first holes are, if you hit a good drive, you can have a wedge from the from a flat lie, but if you hit it, a, another club off the tee in a weak drive, you'll be on a, there's a bit of a down slope there on the first hole from many years since I've been there now, but uh, um, I, I just know that's that's important. Um, second hole's a tough long path three. And again, the, it's really hard to hit the third fairway, so it doesn't matter what you hit off the tee, you're a lottery whether you even hit the fairway because of all the humps and hollows of a typical Lynx course. So just get it down there as far as you can and um, because the green's very small. This is another reason why you have to drive it rather than laying up off the tee because you need a short iron to hit those greens. So, um, and then, uh, I mean... So tell me, how do you, you know, how do you attack Paraparamu under, under stroke play conditions and the pressure of a New Zealand Open? I mean... We've got those first five holes, which you you um, you know you kind of struggle to get through the five, and then there's a lot of minefields there, and then you got a little bit of um, you know six through eight, you can you can make up some ground, and and well probably even a little bit more than that, and then you kind of hang on coming home. But you, you started that last round in '93 with a birdie on the second and a birdie on the third, so you part, you you started pretty hot. Yeah, it's a yeah well. I drove the ball driving. I, I worked out that you have to drive the ball well and with a driver. I don't think you, you can sort of bail out those first five holes, as you, as you said. You know, the first holes are, if you hit a good drive, you can have a wedge from, the, from a flat lie. But if you hit it, a, another club off the tee in a weak drive, you'll be on a, there's a bit of a down slope there on the first hole from many years since I've been there now. but. Uh, um, I, I just know that's that's important. Um, second hole's a tough long par three, and again, the, it's really hard to hit the third fairway. So it doesn't matter what you hit off the tee; you're a lottery whether you even hit the fairway because of all the humps and hollows of a, of a typical links course. So just get it down there as far as you can, and um, because the green's very small, this is another reason why you have to drive it rather than laying up off the tee because. You need a short iron to hit those greens. So, um, and then uh, I mean, the fourth hole is a long par four. That was always a tough drive through the hills. Yeah. And then you got that really nasty um, par three, the fifth, which I think the fifth and the sixteenth holes are probably the two two of the best holes on the course. Um, great par threes, not long. No. Um, I think probably one. The fifth is only about 155 yards, 140 meters, Correct. and um, and 16. Would you say 126 meters? 126 yeah. meters, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with a really, with a really yards. skinny green. That's a great, great design, great uh, holes. But the other hole, the other great hole on the golf course is the 17th long par four, with a with a tough green to hit. So a tough fairway to hit and then a tough green to hit. So I think it's a, a real classic, classic hole. So you talked about, you know, having to play your short irons, but there was, um, there was a long iron uh, that you played in particular. You played it twice, uh, which looks like it set up that victory. And it was, it was a one iron. Uh, you hit it on seven to, to 12 feet and, and got your birdie there. And, uh, the 18th, you hit it again and, and, and birdied the last. I guess you would have had a little bit of comfort. It looks like you had a couple of shots there, but uh, you don't, you don't, obviously, you don't see the one iron a lot these days. No, you don't, you know, you don't see a one or a two iron very much these days. Some occasionally a two iron, but most of the guys are using five. Woods. The balls don't spin as much as they used to. So 
So they're using a lot more loft now to get the ball in the air. You know, in my early days, I was trying to keep it low, and now now I'm trying to get it in the air. So it's a contrast in sort of styles. Um, you know, when you play golf for over forty years. So, but um, yeah, one yeah, yeah, one arm is a good club on my bag. I remember Matt Sullivan, a good Kiwi friend of mine, and a great golf family in New Zealand was caddying for me, and I. I if I if I'd parred the seventeenth, I was going to play the eighteenth of the three shotter because there's a, there's a at the time there's out of bounds on the right where that creek and the and the practice fairway is. I don't know if it's still there, but yeah, it's still there. But it was then, and there was heavy rough on the left hand side of the fairway. So, but I remember the wind was in out of the left, which is not a good drive. But anyway, I, I managed to bogey um, seventeen, so I just ripped the driver out of the bag and walked back to the tee and I probably at the best drive of my life hard down the left hand side real stinger and and it um and it ran out nice and that left me a one iron to the green pin was sort of back right back past the the front bunker and I just hit the best one iron ever I just hit it straight at the left hand edge of the green faded it in the middle of the green 20 foot away two putt to win I, I think I won by two in the end but uh it's it's a it's a tough uh, tough hole to make the to hit a couple of good shots on, but um, yeah, I remember those two shots very well. Pretty uh, pretty rewarding at the end of the day, Peter, when you you held the uh, silverware up. And, and what was what was it like, you know, post post the New Zealand Open? What did you were you staying locally up here on the on the coast, or were you in in the city? Um, no, I stayed um, I stayed in Paraparaumu, pretty pretty close, and. Uh, I think I've stayed a few times. I don't know if the motel's still there on the 10th hole. Yeah, just left yeah. of the 10th. Yeah, like, it's, um, it's not a motel at the moment, but it, it probably hasn't had a decor change since you stayed there in 93. No, I remember the lino tables and the lino <laughs> floors. It was pretty basic, but a fantastic location to uh, just to stay at. And um, so I really enjoyed it there. And, um, you know, the town was lovely. And the, and the golf course, unfortunately, we don't get to play there much these days but um it's i i still think it's it's definitely my favorite in new zealand even with these other fantastic golf courses that they've got so you touched on just before back up in europe uh your victory up there at the 93 bmw championship in germany um i mean yeah what was it what was it like to win up there i mean it's you're winning on a, on a pretty big stage the european tour yeah, no, that was that was great. It's a, it's a fantastic tournament. I know the um, um, I'm good friends with the promoter of the tournament who runs the the tournament for BMW because um, he was assistant pro when I first when we first played there, and then he went on to you know to run the tournament. Um, so I, I was very friendly with him, and and uh, they ran they run a fantastic event. Munich's just a beautiful city to go to. Anybody that wants to trip around and wants to know where to go. Munich's uh, one of the places uh, uh, in Bavaria there. It's beautiful. But um, they had a great field. Sandy Lyle, Ian Worsden, Bernard Langer and, and all the regular crew. They were, I think Sevi was playing as well. So um, it was a good... But I, I, I love the golf course. It has it had good practice facilities. Uh, I always play pretty well when they've got good facilities to practice and you can just chill out and work on your game. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, it was a great week. And um, I remember uh, I, was, I was a couple of shots behind, but starting the last round, but I managed to hit every green on the golf course. I had four, four par fives in two. And um, I remember hitting the pin with my three wood on the ninth dropped down about a yard away and made eagle there. Um, but anyway, shot and then hit the... There's water and out of bounds down the left-hand side of the 18th and, uh, and water on the right-hand side of the green. And I, I ripped a drive there and hit a five-wood on the middle of the green and two-putted there to shoot 63 and uh, beat Worsden by a couple of shots, I think. So it was a, it was a great last round and... Uh, and I didn't. I 
I, I didn't know, but Ian Worsenham had bogeyed the um, 17th. He was in the group behind me. Um, so I didn't have to drive her. And then I didn't have to five wood at the green. But I I thought that he, he would have parred it. So I needed a birdie to beat him. So I went for it, even though with the out of bounds on the water. And, uh, right. and Mike Clayton was jumping up and down the clubhouse. No, lay it up, lay it up. But I didn't know, you know. So anyway, I, I finished in style. Yeah, so, so you've had a great 93, but then it, it, it appears that you, your game went a little bit quiet there towards the back end of the 90s. What was, what was the difference? Yeah, I, I don't know. I sort of, I, I, in the second half of 94, I started playing terrible. And, um, you know, you, I guess after being on the tour for, 20 odd years or 25 years and that you go up and down, you know, you have a few ups and downs. Mm. Whether, you know, technical problems sink in or you mentally get exhausted. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd four kids by then. So that sort of, you know, you got a lot of responsibilities. So anyway, by, by the middle of 96, you know, my game was completely shot and uh, missed. You know, I, ha- I did get a couple of invites in '96 because my, my I missed my card in the end of '95. And uh, but then in the end, it was embarrassing getting an invite when you played so badly. So I, I thought my game and I, I thought was was um, completely finished after after that. So we moved from London back to my wife. I said to my wife, "Where do you want to live?" And she said, "Oh, well, Auckland." Where her family is, so we moved to Auckland, and uh, and that's uh, this is where we've been ever since. But. Um